Hello, my name is Vignesh Santhal Kumar, and this is lecture number eight in the math lecture series. And just a reminder that these notes, as well as the palms at the end of these notes, are going to be attached on Google Classroom. So I suggest you look over the notes and you do all of the palms and questions on your own. And then you also look up some extra additional palms and questions on this, palm, on this topic in order to further master this topic. But moving on, Today we'll be talking about inequalities. So inequalities are basically, are basically like if you have like x plus three, but instead of equal to y, it's greater than y. It's basically where it opens the door for multiple possibilities and sometimes infinite solutions. Also, another thing you need to note about inequalities: most of the time when you're solving or dealing with inequalities, it's very similar when if you're dealing with a normal equation, except you just replace an equal sign for the the less than or equal or whatever inequality sign. However, there are some some like the major differences that you guys should know about for the SAT, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So, first topic I'm going to be going over is solving inequalities. So, basically, it's like when you're solving for inequality, you're solving for a variable. It's very similar to when you're solving for an equation. You isolate one variable in one side and you make, you make it equal to a constant. And that's your solution. Like you have x is greater than three, or x is greater than or equal to three, something like that. However, so there is there is one like w exception is that when you're dividing or multiplying both both sides by a negative or number, that is when you have to reverse the sign. So, for instance, like the example I gave here, if you have negative three x is less than or equal to negative nine. Sorry, this one here. Yeah. Then you would simplify this to x is greater than or equal to three. So what I did was I divided both sides by negative three. Because I did that, I did flip the sign. So and another thing you know, sometimes you have stuff like this where you have negative six is less than or equal to x plus six, which is less than or equal to twelve. It's like a double. I don't know. I don't know the exact term for this, but it's like it's like this kind of inequality. When solving for this one, these would just split into two inequalities. So negative six is less than or equal to x plus six, and x plus six is less than or equal to twelve, and solve it that way to get x greater than zero and, and x is less than or equal to six. Alternatively, you could also just know that whatever you do to this middle equation, you do to both the this one and this equal expression, whatever's on both. So you do it on three sides, not just two sides, like you use an equation. However, I find that it's the most simple, simple, simplest when you just separate into two different equations. Next, we have graphing inequalities. This is also pretty simple. Let's say you have a graph, and like, let's say, for example, I have x, I have y is greater than x plus 3. So here at 5.3, and I would first I would draw I would draw the line, but it's it's just the gradient sign. I would I would draw a dashed line. Do some um, this is just a rough sketch, and then it's, if it was a solid line, that means it's greater than or equal to. But the, the, the reason behind that is because this dashed line shows that any point on this line is actually not a solution to this equation. Sorry, let me see like this. So. Since this a solid line, but solid line shows that any solution or any point on the line is a solution to the set. So that's why, if, since it's just greater than and not greater than e or equal to, we know that this is a dashed line. And if it's greater than explicitly, usually that means it's going to be on the top. So it's going to be something like. Sorry, my mistake. Okay, yeah. So, so ignore what I just said. That was, that was a mistake I made. So basically, what I would first do in this scenario is that I would first I would test it out. So I would plug in zero comma zero. So in this case, the zero comma zero work. I don't know. Let me check. So I plug in zero comma zero, and it works because zero plus three is three. That it does not work because zero plus three is. Z is three, but that would suggest that zero is greater than three, which is not true. So that's why I know zero comma zero is on a point. So I'll show it in the opposite side. Alternatively, since there is a greater than sign, I, I usually I would know it's going to be on top of the line. How that can sometimes be confusing if you have like a line that's like vertical, or like, yeah, or you have like something that's like you like you just get confused that way. So my opinion is just test zero comma zero. That's the easiest way to test, and because you it's always it's usually just a constant is that greater than or equal to zero. So yeah. So in this case, since zero comma zero didn't work, and plus I knew because it's a gradient sign, I knew it was above that. Yep. 
yeah, now we have systems of inequalities. So in this case, what is usually the most times when they talk about system of inequality, it would be like a graphing question. It would be like, oh, which one shows like system of inequality, which one you'll see in the problem set. So in this case, you just have two graph with two different inequalities that you would graph no, as you normally would. And it, there would be one intersect point between those two where the two shaded regions overlap. That's that, 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 that any point in that solution, that's the solution to the overall system of inequalities. So usually that's that's usually what you need to know. And also sometimes they'll ask for like a specific point, like a minimum or maximum value. Usually when they talk about that, they mean that they in where the two like the lines or dot those lines intersect. So usually that's 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 the point they're talking about. But if you don't know, I will always just sketch that out, like how I just did with x is greater than equal to three. I just like did like a sketch real quick, so I know how I knew like what quality it would be like that kind of stuff. You can you can get basic stuff from a sketch if you know how to sketch properly. Okay, and now we're gonna go over and do practical, for some practice questions. Again, there are, I, I listed a bunch of practice questions, but however, I would, I'm would i gonna go over like a couple of them just to give like the overall gist of this problem set. I suggest you do all of them on your own time. Again, it's on Google Classroom. And I would suggest you go online and find some extra practice to help you on this problem set if you need help or if you just wanna get to practice and to fully master it. So first, I'm gonna do number one, which of the following is a solution to inequality negative x minus four is greater than four x minus 14. In this case, just solve it like you normally would. Add x on this side, add 14 on this side. That gives me 10 is greater than 5x. That gives me x is less than 2. Because I flipped this over, I also flipped over the sign because I moved the 5x to the sign and 10 to that side. Yes, yeah, so x is greater than 2. I think this, I think that's another maybe confusing. So I first divide both sides by 2 to get x 2 is greater than 2. 2 is greater than x, but I just flipped this all the way over to get x less than 2. Usually you want x is blah, 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 2, or like x is blah, 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 number. As you you want the form to be. So which of the following solutions to which of these numbers? So what it means, it wants it, what number is going to be less than 2? The only solution here is answer A. And in this case, there are infinite solutions, but they're asking for which one of these could be the solution. Okay, number 8. This is like a word problem. To get to work, Harry must travel eight miles by bus and 16 miles by train every day. The bus travels at an average speed of X miles per hour. So I have I have, an, I have eight miles per hour. How it goes by X miles per hour. So if I want to find how many hours, I would divide by X because miles over miles per hour gives you hours. And the, the, train, tra the train travels at average speed of Y miles per hour. So again, that's similar, that's 16 over Y. And his and he does both of these in one thing in like in this hourly commute. If Harry's daily commute never takes more than one hour, never takes more, that that means it's gonna be less than or equal to because that means it's gonna be less than one or it can be the same as one. Because it never takes more, so that means one is still a possible solution. Which which of the following inequalities represents the possible average speed of the bus and trains? So this equation I just wrote, this is the exact same as equation A. I thought equation A is the correct. But even if you even if you didn't write this equation or, or like while I was reading question, after you read the question, you could tell, okay, so I'm gonna I see eight over I wanna if I wanna find time, I wanna do miles miles over miles per hour to find things. So I would do eight over x plus sixteen over y, so that's an equal to one. Okay, number 10 was the other one I wanted to go over. This is like the graphing inequality question, where it's like, which of the following graphs in the xy plane could represent the system of inequalities above? So we have two inequalities right here, and I want to find which of these graphs would represent, best represent it. So in this case, what I, I would first do is I would see which, I, I see that both, for all four of these, the, the lines are the exact same, which is like which, which of these like four regions is shaded. So, First, I want I want to think to myself which one of these is the thing. So I first I would sketch this out real quick. It it can just be a stupid like a random sketch because like you don't have to have exactly precise. Sorry, one second. All right, and now that you have that, I would I would first see which line is the with the three over two x plus two, three over two x plus two. Well, it, since it's a positive slope, it's this line, and the negative two x over five is this line. So now that I have this, I, I I'm gonna test out these two lines. So with three over two, two, two like shading, so I can get my shading in region right. So three over two x plus two. So I'm gonna plug in zero, comma zero. 
zero plus two, that's two, is less than or equal to zero. That's not true. So I know that for this line, it's gonna be this region. And I'm also gonna I'm, I'm also gonna test out the, the other line, which is x is less than or equal to negative. So in this case, zero would be less than or equal to negative five, which is not true because zero is greater than. So in this case, zero is not the right answer. It's gonna be this way. And I see that both the shaded regions overlap in this one. So I want the equa equation to have a shaded region here. So the one the only one that has a shaded region in that case for the for the solution to both the system inequalities is D. So D is the right answer there. Now finally we're gonna go over number 14. If sorry, one second. <laughs> I dropped my laptop. <laughs> okay. If if negative 20 over 3 is less than negative 2x plus 4, which is less than negative 9 over 2, what is one possible value of x minus 2? I realize here that x minus 2 is like the is this divided by negative 2. So I'm thinking that advice, but first I want to so do, like put this into two different equations. So I have negative 2x plus 4 is greater than negative 20 over 3. And negative 2x plus 4 is less than negative 9 over 2. And I divide both sides by negative 2 because that, that gives me x minus 2. So instead of solving for x and then doing minus 2, I'm just doing this so it makes it simpler. So if I divide both sides, this would give me x minus 2 is going to be greater than, um, this is going to be 10 over 3. This is going to be negative, this is going to be x minus 2 is going to be less than, sorry. remember the sign does flip in this case because I'm dividing by negative 2 on both sides. And this becomes it's greater than 9 over 4. So if I write this all out, I would get 10 over 3, sorry, 9 over 4 is less than x minus 2, which is less than 10 over 3. So I want to, so for, I want one possible value of x over minus 2. I want a value that's in between 9 over 4 and 10 over 3. And if you were, notice in decimal, that's around 2.25, I believe, and that's around 3. So in that case, any solution between those two fractions work. I think number, I think three in general is between these two, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why I would just put, I would just put three there. With my mistake. Wait, yeah, but in any case, just, just do, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure three is the right answer there, but in any case, you just put any number in between. And if you want, yeah, it's, or you just put 10 over four, something, something simple like that, which you know is gonna be in between. So yeah, so that's basically it for this problem set. Again, I would suggest you do all these problems and look at the very end to see all the answers. So yeah, that's basically it. Best of luck. And if you have any questions, you can email me at, and, and, and my email is listed in the little classroom, I believe, or you can message messenger me on Facebook. So yeah, that's basically it. Have a nice day and hope, hope wish you the best of luck on your SAT adventure or journey. <laughs>